We call the meeting to order. Uh, for those in the audience, my name is Ed Everly. I work for the Wisconsin Department of Administration. I'm currently the chair of the Incorporation Review Board. Uh, we're here today uh, to hear from people on the incorporation for the town of Brookfield. Uh, specifically, I'd ask folks to keep their, their comments directed uh, to that end. And again, we're here specifically to elicit <coughs> testimonies from petitioners uh, interveners, neighboring communities, and the jurisdiction and area residents and businesses about this particular incorporation. Uh, this standard is set in Wisconsin Statute 66.0207 and just asked to keep to the facts for the Town of Brookfield Incorporation. I'll have the members of the board, then staff, then the petitioners and parties of uh, interest introduce themselves. I'll go through a couple uh, housekeeping items and then I turn it over to staff for review. So with that, I'll just uh, start to my right and have board members introduce themselves, please. Paul oh, Fisk, Mayor of Lodi, a community of about 3,000 in Columbia County, about 100 miles uh, north and west here. Halfway between Wisconsin and Delson. Rich Eggleston, I represent the Urban Alliance and I live in the city of Fitchburg, which is the only city in Wisconsin that became a city as a result of a 4-3 to three decision of the Wisconsin Supreme Court. And you, you needn't know more about that, but if you want to, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> I'm Terry McMahon, supervisor of Tom Yorkville in the city county, and a director for the Wisconsin Town Association. I'm Eric Schmidke with the Department of Administration. I work in the Municipal Boundary Review Program, which uh, involves annexations, boundary agreements, and also incorporations, which is why we're here today. My name is Renee Powers. I also work for the Department of Administration. <coughs> I keep the Municipal Boundary Review Program as well as the Plat Review Program. And I'm Bill Ramsey, I'm the Deputy Legal Counsel for the Department of Administration. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Just a couple uh, housekeeping items to uh, make the hearing run a little bit smoother. Um, again, this is not a court proceeding or legislative, it is a public hearing to take comments. Uh, we'll hear from both uh, petitioners and parties of interest in uh, just a bit here. If um, you don't have to speak, but if, I would ask if you wish to speak, I encourage you to do so, or if you want to comment in favor or opposition, right outside the door here there are hearing slips. And I'd ask that you print your name clearly, and then if you do come forward for all those who will speak, <coughs> this is most important for Elizabeth, our court reporter, if, we, if you would please um, state your name and spell it for her and we'll keep comments, at least for those in the general public. Please try and keep your remarks to three minutes. Um, obviously, petitioners, parties of interest, will have a longer time, but we'll start with them. Then we'll include public comment, take perhaps a short five or 10 minute break, and we'll start back in that order to kind of give you a feel of how the hearing will run today. Um, there are restrooms just outside this door, and just as importantly, while unlikely in the event of an emergency, there's obviously an exit uh, in that corner, and just outside the door here to the left is another exit um, if we need to leave. The agenda is also outside these doors, included by the hearing slips. And so as we proceed through the day, um, Board members can ask questions of the petitioners or interveners if they can do the same with us. I will not be taking comments from the audience or have a back and forth. However, if you wish to approach myself or board members, I'm um, more than happy to have a conversation with you during the breaks. If you would like to have a conversation, I just ask as a courtesy to everyone else who's trying to speak and listen that you uh, take those conversations outside the room. <clears throat> it's same if there's reporters here who wish to talk to myself or board members, you'd be happy to do that during the breaks. And then finally, if you do have a cell phone, I just ask that if you'd silence it at this time or double check it. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Eric Schmidtke of our staff, and he can go through some of the criteria for the petition. I'll just go over some of the handouts that are in the back table as you came in. I see 
see a lot of people in the, in the hallway. We have some seats up here. Does anyone want to come in or? Employees. Okay. Employees. <laughs> so let me, let, let me just talk about this handout first. It's, it's a flow chart of the process. The two things I guess that are important to take from this flow chart are number one, that there's different actors involved with the incorporation process. It started out with petitioners, then moved to the circuit court. Uh, we're another part of the process, the incorporation review board. And so you can see this gray box right here. This is where we're at today, the public hearing. Um, after today, what we have left in the process is two meetings in Madison. We have tentative dates, except for June and July. Um, those are tentative. Uh, at those meetings, we'll be uh, talking about standards. The board members will be talking about the standards amongst themselves. Um, based on what, what we hear from today in terms of what you provide us, uh, both residents, uh, petitioners, uh, parties of interest, we'll, we'll take all the information that, we, that you provide us today. We'll, we'll go back and talk about that at our June and July meetings. And then we'll issue a determination on this. Our determination is due July 30th, so we will be sending that to the circuit court. The process goes back to the circuit court then. Um, the board is statutorily authorized to grant the petition, deny the petition, or send it back with um, revised boundaries. Maybe boundaries that um, the board thinks could, could meet the standard. So the board has three choices. July 30th, we'll be submitting our, our findings and determination on what we've decided. That goes to the circuit court, and then the circuit court will, will um, I guess, conclude, conclude that. Um, the other handout you have is a calendar at the top, and this is just kind of this is mirroring this and providing a little more detail for each of the boxes. Um, if you look on the flow chart, you're going to see you know, things going along, starting along in 2011 and going to 2012. Then you see our gray boxes in 2015. That's not a typo. Um, this petition was stayed numerous times. Um, once to allow the petitioners and parties of interest to mediate um, differences. <coughs> and then it was stayed a second time to allow for some court proceedings. That's why that's why we have that three-year gap there. In case you're wondering, let's move on to our third handout and statutory standards for the what the incorporation review board looks at. As I mentioned, there's different actors. The circuit court has different standards than we do. When they look at the petition, uh, when they looked at it back in 2012, they were looking for minimum area and population standards. Our standards are different, and you'll see our standards right here in this document. Now, when you when you if you fill out a registration slip and you'd like to testify, you know we'd like to hear whatever it is that's important to you, uh, whatever it is that brought you here today to, uh, to give us your opinions and thoughts and feedback. However, it's important when you testify to keep these standards in mind because that's what that's what we're going to be looking at. So, you know, just read, if you have any questions about the standards, feel free to ask. Ask during the break. Um, or right now, uh, briefly, the, the, the standards are compactness and homogeneity, um, vacant territory beyond the, the densest part of the position. Um, I don't know, if, uh, do we have, is the services standard at play here? Yes. It is? Okay. So we'll be looking at services. Can the petitioned area provide services? Um, and we'll be comparing that to neighboring municipality uh, who, has, who has petitioned to annex the territory and provide services. Stand, uh, That's only the city. 
It's only one that we're going to be looking at. Your brief is only one that has the petition. So we're going to be comparing the petitioner's services to the city of Brookfield's services and comparing it uh, to what the reasonable, uh, the, the, the services desired by the residents and, and what's a reasonable level based on you know, past, past determination of case law type of thing. Um, we're going to look at the uh, impact on the metropolitan community. How does this petition impact the region, the larger region. Um, and we're going to impact the tax, the, the, the ability of the territory to raise sufficient revenue to operate as a village. Any questions on the standards? <coughs> Again, we'd like to hear whatever you have to say, but if you can structure your comments around those standards would be most helpful for the board. Okay. Thank you, Eric. <coughs> next, so for the next hour or so, what we'll do is we'll call forth now the petitioners, Town of Brookfield. They'll have 60 minutes, about an hour, uh, to give their presentation. And then we'll have public comments for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then if the petitioners need, they can resume for another 20 minutes. I know that I was asked probably about 1.30 or so, um, we might pause uh, for petitioners because they have a couple of individuals who want to come and present and we will do that. Um, so with that, I'll call forward uh, those who are going to be presenting.